I'm going to show you how you can make an alliterative, beautiful bokeh background for your portraits. That part wasn't alliterative, let's just... So a few years ago, about six years ago now, I came up with this idea that I later realized was not an original idea, as most things aren't, they're usually done by other people, but <laughs> at the time, um, I, I was doing still life and product photography, and I wanted to have a, a background that was, um, that, that created a really nice bokeh effect. It never really occurred to me that I could use that for portraits until much later on. And so when I first tried it out for portraits, I took two light stands on either side of the, the, the subject, put it behind them, and kind of wrapped aluminum, um, crumpled up aluminum foil right behind, across the, um, the two light stands. So it acted like a makeshift background, which is all well and good, but I kind of wanted to do something a little bit bigger than that, something with the potential to use a um, full-length portrait on, for example. And so I went down to Home Depot, which is, if you're not in America, a uh, DIY home improvement kind of hardware store. And I found this stuff, which is a white tile board that you can find in like the molding section of the, the Home Depot. It's about $13 for an eight foot by four foot long white glossy kind of MDF board. I originally was actually gonna go with a, um, a big foam insulation board that you can find in the insulation section. Same price, same size, but it was a little bit thicker. It's about a half inch thick and it was more rigid. So it didn't actually bend or move or anything like this stuff did. But I was like, well, this is probably going to be good enough. And to be fair, it is. If I had my druthers, I would go back and get the insulation board because it is just lighter, more portable, and a little bit more sturdy. So I got this thing, and depending on how big you want to make this, you might want to get two because I only got one just to try it out, and it worked well, and I kind of wish I would have got another one. Say lovey, but I can always go back and get more. <laughs> so now that you got your foam insulation board or your tile board or whatever it is, you kind of need your aluminum foil. And originally I had gone with um, Reynolds Wrap, which is kind of like the name brand aluminum foil that everyone uses. I figured if I went with the name brand stuff, it would be less likely to rip when I'm kind of spreading it across the, uh, the, the tile board. But what I actually found was this stuff was, was much better. It's, it's aluminum foil brand aluminum foil. <laughs> literally so generic that it doesn't even have a brand name and the reason was is because the Reynolds wrap was actually not as shiny as the off-brand generic aluminum foil was and I'll show you some test results here the one on the left here is actually the Reynolds wrap it's kind of like a dull less contrasty kind of thing which could be cool if that's what you're going for but the one on the right was the one I was kind of going for which is more contrasty and, and kind of has more shadow and highlight play and the, and the little balls of light there in the background, your bokeh, uh, is more prominent. So I guess it really all depends on what you're kind of going for. If you want the duller look, then, you know, use a uh, aluminum foil that's kind of less shiny. You can try out a bunch of different brands and see what it is that you like. And most aluminum foil, if you get it, it's shinier on one side and duller on the other side. When I'm talking about the Reynolds wrap here, that was actually the shiny side. The dull side would have been just atrocious. <laughs> just make sure you don't make the same mistake I did where I actually covered the entire tile board in Reynolds wrap thinking, oh yeah, I'm probably going to want to use this. And then I took the first photo and I realized... Yeah, that's not actually what I want. So I had to recover the entire tile board with the generic aluminum foil to get the look I wanted. You know, just try out a little piece of it first and then see how that works and then go from there. It's a lot better than wasting hours of time that you could have spent actually taking photos. <laughs> and also I should know that you should crumble up the aluminum foil first. You don't want to just take it out of the aluminum foil packaging as it is and then spread it across the background because you're not going to get the look that you're kind of going for. You'll get a little bit here and there, but it's not going to be nearly as prominent as it is in these photos. So what you want to do is crumble it up first, but I would suggest not just taking it wadding into a ball and then, you know, trying to unravel it from there because chances are you're probably going to, one, it's going to take forever to unwad it from a ball, two, you're going to rip it a lot and it's going to be a huge pain in the ass to deal with. I would say is to do something like this, which is to crumble it up as you roll it into a long um, 
hot dog shape. I don't, I don't know what to call this. And then just pull it back in like this as you unravel it. You're less likely to um, get the uh, holes and things in it. Although this one, I did mess it up. The other way I also did it was just kind of massage it as I went along and then kind of unfolded it, massaged it a little bit, unfolded it, crumbled up a little bit just so it's less prone to ripping and also it was a lot easier to deal with because I didn't have to flatten it back out to put it on the, on the background here. The other thing you might be thinking throughout this entire video, why aluminum foil? Why don't I just use a reflector, right? It's got a silver shiny side to it. The thing is, like the uncrumpled aluminum foil, the reflector's not really going to give you the look that you're going for. It might get a little bit of a decent looking bokeh here and there, but this is, is more to create this really dramatic look in the, the background of your image. And the other great thing, if you do actually use a, uh, a foam board instead of the tile like I did, you could actually have a giant uh, reflector that you can use for anything. A little less portable than the, uh, the, the foldable reflectors, but you also have an 8 foot by 4 foot reflector. <laughs> giant reflector it's really cool but anyway i just kind of wanted to bring this to light to people who may not have realized that you can do something kind of creative with aluminum foil i mean it's really cheap you have a background that was what 13 dollars for the board and the aluminum foil costs like two bucks i mean because i got the generic it, it was a dollar for the entire roll and it was 27 square feet i mean at most five bucks for the aluminum foil you, it's less than twenty dollars and you have a backdrop that's really freaking banging so that's cool and that'll do it for this video i thank you so much for watching this video and i hope it helped you out in some way and if it did go ahead and hit the like button because that shows me that you like the video and if you want to see more videos like this or other things dealing with photography techniques and advice and cultivating creative mindset, hit subscribe and you'll be alerted to more of my videos as they come out in the future. But until next video, I'll see you later.